Well, good morning. Welcome to Bradley United Methodist Church. I'm Reverend Steve McPeak. I'm the pastor here. And if you're worshiping with us for the first time, we'd like to say welcome and glad to have you with us this morning. We're so glad that you're able to be here and, and worship with us. And, and uh, for those that are worshiping online, we just want to say welcome and glad to have you with us this morning as well. Um, just a reminder that uh, we do have our candles over here for our breakthrough prayer initiative that we are uh, undertaking right now where we are praying a prayer together as a congregation uh, every uh, every day twice a day at 9 45 a.m and 9 45 p.m and it is our breakthrough prayer and so we just ask that you pray that together to see what god is going to do in and through our congregation here at bradley and so um, if you do not have a card and would like to pray with us, there are cards available uh, at the tables as you exit the sanctuary. There are tables there that you can pick up a card, take that home with you. Um, some find it convenient to take a picture of it and put it on their phone so they always have it with them. And then I set my alarm on my phone so at 9.45 it goes off and it reminds me to stop and, and pray the prayer. Um, and so... Uh, an example of a breakthrough prayer that we have just experienced as I'd like to share with you today uh, is Kathy Medved. I don't know if you've heard, but uh, she had surgery uh, to remove some cancer that she had. And uh, the report, she just went to the doctor and the doctor said she is cancer free. She does not need chemo. She doesn't need radiation. She doesn't need chemo, nothing. So there's candle lit. God is breaking through in powerful ways through our prayers as a congregation, as a people. And so just keep it up because God is working in our midst. And so we're excited for, for uh, Kathy. We're excited for Dave. Uh, and uh, just wanted to share that with you. And also, um, you know, there's others that are experiencing breakthroughs as well. So what I want to do real quick, and oh, I want, before I, I pray over the, the candles, I just want to say uh, we are planning a, a trip to the Holy Land as well. I'm going to be hosting a trip. Uh, and so we just want to kind of get an idea of how many people are interested. If you're interested in going to the Holy Land, we will have a brief meeting uh, next Sunday, May 7th, in the parlor to talk about that and to answer any questions you may have and to kind of set a date that works well for everybody that's interested in going. Uh, so um, if you're interested, if that's something that you think you might be uh, interested in doing, then just uh, meet with us May 7th in the parlor and we'll talk about that. The, uh, right after the service, right after the service, thank you. Um, it's gonna be right after the, the, uh, the morning worship service, we'll meet there. Uh, to give us a couple minutes to, to chat, to talk, and then we'll be in there. So let's pray. I want to pray over the, the candles this morning, over what God is doing. Oh, gracious God, we just thank you for the breakthroughs that are happening in our midst. And we just thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness and your, 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 your love that you have expressed to each and every one of us here. And, Lord, we just celebrate with those that have lit a candle for the breakthrough that is happening in their life. Lord, you know what those are. And we don't need to know, but you know. And so, Lord, we just pray right now that you would just continue to uh, do extraordinary things in the life of your people. That, Lord, you would continue to break down walls and, and break through in, in spectacular ways to help us be your disciples in this world. To help us share our witness with others about you in our lives and how you have worked in our lives and that you are worthy of our praise and our glory and, and, your, and our, our prayers, our praise and, and just everything about you and giving you glory and honor. And so Lord, we just thank you for the breakthroughs and we just pray that you continue to work in the lives of the people that are here today. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Now we will do our breakthrough prayer. Let us pray this prayer together. Please stand as we pray this prayer together. <clears throat> Almighty God, may your preferred will break through, usher in and accomplish through us your new hopes, dreams, and possibilities, both in the life of our church 
and in our own lives. We surrender our wills for yours in order to fully follow you. Empower us to always answer, Yes, Lord, send me. Amen. You may be seated. As you take your seats, also I want to remind you that there are pew pads in the pews. If you could please uh, put your name in the pew pad and then pass it down so we could have a record of your being with us today. We'd appreciate that. And also online, there's a place in the comments section for you to click on to uh, let us know that you're with us as well. There's a pew pad for you to sign as well. Thank you. We continue in the season of Easter with the understanding that the apostles and followers of Jesus Christ are committed to meet together. Most of these had an experience with the risen Christ and a sense of awe had enveloped them. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings, to the community, to their shared meals, and to their prayers. together in unity and shared in everything. They shared what they had with others, and God's power was experienced in the wonders and signs through the apostles. We are chosen as well to share not only the gospel of Jesus Christ, but also to demonstrate God's goodness to everyone. We too are to devote ourselves to the teachings of Jesus Christ so that we will become disciples of Jesus as reflected in serving others for the glory of God.
seated. As you take your seats, we'll ask the children to come forward at this time for the children's message. about out, isn't it? We're at the end of school. You guys uh, going to go back and sit in the same seats you sat in when you graduate? No. <laughs> Say no. We're going to sit in a different seat. So, well, I just wanted to say that um, we're here in the, in the church. We are a family. And so, when we come here, you can sit anywhere you want. We don't have designated seats like you have at school, where you have to go sit in a certain seat so they can take attendance. We don't have to do that here. Although some people think we do. <laughs> we don't have to sit in the same seats every Sunday. We don't have designated seating, right, church? <laughs> right, okay. So, uh, that's debatable, I know. Uh, but. Uh, everybody's welcome. So if you, somebody comes and they sit down in your seat, you just let them sit there, right? Well, um, that's part of what this message is about that we're going to talk about today, or that we're going to read in the scriptures, that the family of God, the church family, and what all they did, and how they came together, and how they um, loved each other, and prayed together, and worshiped together, kind of like what we do here on, in, in church. And they studied the scriptures together, and um, they shared everything that they had with one another. Do you like to share? Good, good, because that's, that's what we're supposed to do. That's what we're called to do, is to share with one another so that those that don't have anything can have something, that their needs can be met. So those that don't have any clothes can have clothes, and those that don't have any food can have food, and those that don't have any shoes can have shoes. Uh, so that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to, to share. And that's what the, um, the message or the, the scripture is about today. It talks about how they shared everything and had everything in common to help encourage one another as they prayed and worshiped together. And so that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to share with one another. And so let's pray. Let's do a prayer. Close out with a prayer. We thank you, God, for this church family. We thank you for this place where we can come and be accepted and loved as people have welcomed us. So let us welcome others with open hearts. Let us care for one another's needs and, and uplift one another. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. Now, I wanna, I'm gonna, I got something to share with you today. So this is something, it's called taffy. It may stretch you a little bit. <laughs> it's stretchy. Here, this is some taffy to share with you guys. You're welcome. And you can share with each other if you want. If you don't like a certain kind, you can change it, you know, say, hey, I'll, I'll switch it with you. You're welcome. You're welcome. But that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to share something with you today. All right. So you have to go ahead and, and then go with Patty, Miss Patty, and, and she'll take you downstairs for the children's time. Please stand as you are comfortable uh, for the scripture reading. Our lesson today comes from the book of Acts, chapter 2 starting with verse 42. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. All came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home 
and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you very much. What do we call you? Uh, here. Huh? We're here. We're here? <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Praise team. Okay. What, what an awesome uh, way. They, they're awesome. I don't know what I'm speechless, you know. Hey. But uh, I do need, I need God. I don't know about you guys, but I need him all the time uh, to help me out. Um, but today, uh, we have a special Sunday. Um, I'm going to introduce to you a Bill Smith, who is in charge of our Faith Promise, um, who is going to share with you a little bit about what Faith Promise is and um, what it goes for and all of that stuff that goes along with it. So I'm just going to introduce Bill Smith. And Bill, would you come forward now and share a little bit about Faith Promise? This is Faith Promise Sunday, and he's going to share a little bit more about that with you. You. Thank 
Thank you, Pastor Steve. Good morning, everyone. Today is the uh, Sunday that we set aside annually to focus on faith promise or our missions giving. Missions giving is over and above our usual budget giving for the church expenses. And I'm very proud to say that 100% of all faith mission, faith promise giving will be distributed to the agencies that we support. You have a list of those agencies and the total dollar amount of donations for 2022 attached to the bulletin today for, your, for uh, your information. There's also a pledge card attached to that, which we would like to uh, have you prayerfully, prayerfully consider your support of our missions giving. And if you could come to a conclusion today, please fill out that pledge card and drop it in to the uh, offering plate. If not, keep the card until you come to a conclusion. And then you may drop it off at the church office to Tracy, and Tracy will route it to me. Our uh, speaker for this morning is Deborah Weber. Deborah is the current executive director of Love Inc. Deborah's association with Love Inc. started in 2015 as a clearinghouse volunteer and then as a member of the board of directors. She served as an interim director in the last quarter of 2020 and was officially appointed as the executive director in January 2021. Deborah holds a social services degree from Ball State University. Please let's give Deborah a warm and friendly welcome. Churches for Love Inc. So Love Inc. started back in, we opened our doors to start serving individuals in Hancock County in, at the beginning of 2004. We had signed our affiliate agreement with Love Inc., which stands for Love in the, in the Name of Christ, uh, at the end of 2003. But there was, I think, about three years of work by people in this community to bring Love Inc. here. And we started off with five churches that committed to supporting Love Inc. that said, we want to see Love Inc. here. Five churches that said, we see the vision. And this is something we want to move forward. And Bradley was there from the beginning. And we just, um, at Love Inc., are so appreciative of everything that Bradley does, not only through Love Inc., but just in the community. As I was talking with some individuals earlier, we can't do any of what we do you know, alone. Um, not only do we need Christ to do what we do, but we need the other organizations and the other churches working together to work with these individuals um, that uh, have needs in our community. And the, the verse that was shared out of Acts 2 about um, giving to those in need, that is really a big part of what we do at Love, Inc., is helping to identify what that need is. Because sometimes the individuals, when they contact us, the need they think they have or they're contacting us with isn't the need that really needs to be filled. Because we're also commanded, if you can work, you should work, and you should contribute, and you should participate. And so we at Love, Inc., we take that very seriously, and we take time to look at these needs, to pray about the individuals that we're serving, and to figure out the best way to serve them and to help them in a way that will really be helpful. Love Inc. is here to help the churches, help people. That's what we've been about um, since we started back in 2004 and helped our, our first individual. And the way that works, we have a clearinghouse, and the clearinghouse is 
where calls come in, calls are that neighbors with needs are listened to, they're prayed for, needs are verified, and they're discerned the best way to serve them. It's also where we can be uh, aware of things that are going unmet and help churches develop what we would call gap ministries within the churches. And so we have several churches in our community that have developed specific ministries that can meet some of those needs. And then we also have the part of Love Inc. where we can get individuals into a program and our newest program in our transformational ministry is called Faith and Finances where we can walk alongside them and help them look at their finances, help them understand what's going in, what's going out, the best way to handle their income, and pair them with a mentor that can continue with them and walk alongside them and help them reach their goals. In 2022, Love Inc. served 539 unique families. So that's families just being counted once. Some families were served more than one time or had more than one need. And 2,882 volunteer hours were mobilized through the churches. And so to me, that's just really amazing. And Bradley is part of those. We have volunteers from Bradley that, that help meet needs, that help meet needs with neighbors and with us as an organization. We only have three employees, but there's an army of volunteers out here in this community. And so thank you for being part of that army of people. But more interestingly, how does this look in our community? And I know when I turn my head, you probably can't hear me quite as well, right? Because the microphone's over here. <laughs> but how does that look in our community? Well, it looks like uh, Ryan, a young dad who came to us because he was about to be disconnected with his electricity. Never had been in a situation like this, but he had lost his job. He wasn't able to pay the bills. And as he was speaking with our volunteer, he was feeling very down and discouraged. We were able to verify his knee, get things taken care of, so that didn't happen. But the best part was when we called back for a follow-up to check and to see how he was doing, he three times on the phone said, you know, I was so appreciative as to how the volunteer listened to me, talked to me, gave me encouragement, and I didn't expect anybody to pray for me when I called for assistance. But your volunteer prayed with me on the phone. He said, that gave me the courage to do what I needed to do when I was feeling pretty down. And he did, he did just that. He had a job and he was all caught up on his bills. His wife was also back to work. And that is just a huge praise to the Lord working through these volunteers that are there answering the phones and listening to these individuals. Because, you know, Christ was just the best listener, wasn't he? If you look through the scripture, he is a wonderful example of when we are with people, how to listen to people. And that's what our volunteer, volunteer did on that day. It also looks like the um, young lady, the young mom that was leaving a domestic violence situation that came to us. She called crying. She wasn't sure what she needed to do. We were able to connect her with the appropriate resources for that. But in talking to her, we also knew that she needed some clothing for her children, so we were able to get her a voucher to the Hope House. We arranged for that to happen. She came in. We had some comfort quilts that were donated to us from another church in the community. And Randy, our clearinghouse coordinator, gave her one of those and explained that the women who made this prayed over every stitch as they made these quilts and just prayed that they would bring her some kind of comfort. Randy went back to doing her thing in the office, realizing a little bit later, this young lady is still sitting in her car, so Randy went out to talk to her, see what was happening, and she's just sitting in her car crying. But she has this comfort quilt wrapped around her. And um, when she rolls down her window, she just says, you don't 
don't know what this means to me. Sometimes it's just these little acts of kindness and service that can speak God's love to these individuals. So we can't ever underestimate these small seeds that we are planting in people's lives. It's also the local church as one of the smaller churches in our community that adopted or supported a family over uh, Christmas, so they can kind of Christmas connection with many of you are familiar with, but they got to know this church got to know this family, invited them to church, they started coming. The mom didn't know about God, she didn't know about Jesus, but she knew the love she felt from these individuals that came and were helping her family. And they were coming, to, they started coming as a family to church. And eventually she came to accept Christ as her savior and was baptized. And you know, praise the Lord, because true transformation only takes place when we have the Holy Spirit. That's where true change happens. Recently in our faith and finance program, we had a, a senior who was referred to us by her financial advisor. And you may think, if this lady has a financial advisor, what does she need to come to faith and finance us? Well, she had not had to be responsible for her finances. She was fortunate that she had some income, but she was not doing well with managing her money day to day. And so her financial advisor knew of our program and referred her to us. She came to the first class and when it was done, she came up to me and she said, wow, I learned so much. And so that meant so much to us. We knew that this new program we were doing was hitting the mark, and that it's a program that can speak to people of different generations, different stations in life. And um, so that was just a huge blessing that uh, she was able to, to come. She finished the program. She's continuing to meet with a mentor uh, to help her with her goals to be accountable. She's not someone that needs to meet every week to look at all of her expenses and look at her budget. But she does, it is helpful for her to have somebody that's talking with her on the phone, asking her how she's doing, how is it going, and just to be accountable. You know we all need people in our lives to be accountable, no matter where we are. So that was just a huge blessing, a huge praise. And I need to get a drink of water real quick. We also had this other lady just recently, and this is a wonderful story of the importance of the churches working together, the ministries working together, the nonprofits working together, because Love Aid, Love in the Name of Christ, is a large network connecting people with the people they need to be connected with. And the Lord just puts these people and these situations just in the right place. But this lady, she moved to uh, Hancock County. She was staying with a relative. Within a week of being here, she um, got a job at a fast food restaurant. But she continued to look for other jobs that would pay more, and she found one of those. But she needed some steel toe boots. And if you were at the banquet uh, just a couple weeks ago, you heard this story. Because we knew that we could connect her with Changing Footprints. Changing Footprints had uh, some steel toe boots for her so she could get started on her job. But also, in our conversation with her, we knew that she was walking everywhere she was going. So we asked her, would a bicycle be helpful? And she said, yes, a bicycle would be wonderful. And when we were talking with the individuals at Changing Footprints, we mentioned that, and they said, you know what? We have a bike. We have a bike we can give to this person. And, you know, they're not in the bike business. They're in the shoe business. But the Lord worked that out so that that day, not only were they in the boot business, but they were also in the bike business. And what a blessing to this lady that now she can at least ride her bike to where she needs to get where she needs to get to, to get to her job. 
we had this other uh, mom who was staying at the Hope House. And she had multiple kids, young kids, and she didn't have transportation. She was walking. And there were times where she would um, use senior services uh, transportation to get places. But she called us because she wanted to know if there was any way she could get a double stroller. And if any of you ever had young kids close together, you know how wonderful that is. Because I, and I can totally relate to this because I had children in 95, 96, 98. <laughs> so I had little ones together. I can relate. And oh, then I had another one in, in O2. But, so I could relate to having the little kids and having to get around. And she only had a single stroller. And so we were able to connect her with our church partner that provides uh, nursery items. And they were able to get her a double stroller. But that is also a wonderful example of working with the Hope House. So I'm so thankful that you guys also support the Hope House because we can do this ministry thing all together. We can do this ministry with all the churches in Hancock County. We can do this ministry with our uh, government organizations too. We work very closely with our, Hanc our Hancock County trustees. Last year we served somebody in every um, township and especially here in Center Township and in Buck Creek Township right now, they're telling their individuals, you need to go to the Faith and Finances class. Because once they've been served, they've been served. And then that, that safety net, that resource, that is done. And we need to work with these individuals to move them along and not just put a Band-Aid on it. It's important that we help in a way that isn't hurtful and unfortunately today, I, I, I have a story where that has happened. We have a young lady in our community that multiple people have worked with. You know, she went an entire year without paying her rent herself through uh, government assistance, through agencies in town. She never once paid her rent herself, but fortunately, we are all on the same page now with this lady, that we are all coming around her together because we all want to help her. She is one of those individuals for us that is in a hard to serve category. That doesn't mean we won't serve. It just means we need to handle with extra care. And she has made a huge step for her. For us, it may just seem like a small step. But she came to our first session of our faith and finance classes. She com completed the classes, she participated, and she's continuing to work with this mentor. Now, it's not going to change her way of thinking and the way that she's used to having needs met. You don't change a lifetime of thinking and habits in six weeks, it just doesn't happen. But she is going to continue to work with a mentor. There are going to be steps backwards, just like there'll be victories and step forward. But we're there now as a community working with this individual. So Love Inc. and multiple other organizations are on board working, this, working with this young lady to help her make the real changes that she, she, needs, to, um, that she needs to make. It's the stories, Love Inc. is the stories of ramps that have been built. It's garbage disposals that have been installed. It's many blinds that have been hung. It's gardens that have been weeded. It's, um, what else did I write? Oh, gas cards and linens and wheelchairs that have been handed out. And so many of these items are able to improve a neighbor's quality of life in that moment in time. So often that these items that go out to individuals, they're not long-term individuals that need to be served over and over. But the church can come around them through these ministries and help them with their quality of life. 
We had three uh, different families that came into our community that had secured jobs, they had secured a place to live, they had secured transportation, but they were living in either a home or apartment without, without anything. One lady simply wanted a rice cooker, and our kitchen ministry was able to get that for her. And these three families have become productive members of our community. They even called and said, how can we give back? We have some items that have been given to us that we know we are not going to use. Some of it was food, some of it was some other items. What can we do to give back? And so we were able to direct them on how they could give back. And isn't that just amazing and a wonderful praise for how the Lord works in these people's lives? They're here, they're contributing, they're being successful, and that's what we want. And that really helping somebody, helping meeting a need, is when we can move them from where they are to a healthier situation and not keep them in their either toxic environment or in their um, hard situation. And so a big part of what we do is needing wisdom to discern is the way we're gonna, how we help them, is it really gonna help them or is it going to actually hurt them in some way? Is it gonna keep them maintaining in their brokenness and their broken relationships? And I am so appreciative of all of the people here that give to Bradley, both your time and your talent and your finances, that you give to Love, Inc., that you give to the other organizations here in Hancock County so that we can come around these individuals to assist them. Love, Inc. is a network of churches and nonprofits working together to make it a better place for our neighbors here in Hancock County. And I applaud you and thank you for being part of that initial vision to bring the Love Inc., the Love in the Name of Christ network to Hancock County. Because without Bradley on board, you know, maybe we wouldn't be here. We needed churches. Our Love Inc. is one of about 118 affiliates across the country. And to start an affiliate, affiliate, you need churches on board that say, we want to be here, we believe in this, this mission, and we're going to support you. So thank you for doing that. So next year we'll be celebrating 20 years of serving in Hancock County. In Proverbs 3.13 it says, Blessed are those who find wisdom. Those who gain understanding, for she is more profitable than silver and yields better return than gold. She is more precious than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare with her. Long life is in her right hand. In her left hand are riches and honor. She, her ways are pleasant ways, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her. Those who hold her fast will be blessed. So today I just ask for you to pray for wisdom for us at Love Inc. Sometimes we get really heavy situations. Sometimes it's really difficult. We don't get lots of praises. We, get, we have lots of ways to bring glory to God. But we can't do that without wisdom. And so as you remember Love Inc. in your personal time, Maybe when you're here on a Sunday morning, wisdom is that we would ask that you would pray for us as sometimes it's a heavy burden to figure out the best way to meet these situations. But we are so thankful that we are in this ministry. There's three of us, and we all feel that it is a ministry, that it's a privilege to be here and serve our community this way. So thank you, Bradley for having us, for supporting us. And I will hang around a little bit afterwards if um, anybody has any questions, because of course you know, we always like to have volunteers. 
<laughs> I can't leave without saying that, right? <laughs> because if you want to volunteer, I bet I can find a way for you to volunteer. So thank you so much for your time today, for listening. I purposely wrote this out because I could talk all day about loving, but I, I was told I didn't have all day to talk about loving because you guys like to have lunch. And I hear there's donuts afterwards, and so, um, so thank you so much. Awesome. Yeah, I love that. It's a hand up, not a handout. Uh, that everybody has value and worth and has something to contribute. Um, they have knowledge. They have experience. They have wisdom. You know, it's they have value, they have something to offer, not just to, to receive, but to also to give. And so um, I appreciate all that you guys do, Deborah, and uh, helping people to get out of their situations and, and see uh, a new lifestyle, a new life, a new way of living, and giving them hope. You know, I appreciate that. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna have a responsive hymn, and while we're singing this hymn, uh, this will give you an opportunity to kind of pray about, you know, where God is leading you. This is just one of the ministries that we support here at Bradley uh, on this Faith Promise Sunday. Uh, it's just one of the missions that we do. Uh, so uh, if God leads you to fill out that card and put down what it is that you want to um, promise that you're going to support, uh, go ahead and do that during this song. And then when we take up the offering, as Bill said, we'll just put that in the offering plate because um, we will do that uh, after we sing the song. We will have our prayer and then uh, take up the offering. And at that time, we'll put that in the offering plate. And so now let us uh, stand and, and uh, sing our, our song, Where He Leads Me. <clears throat>
you take your seats? Let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Oh, gracious, eternal God, we give you thanks and praise for this beautiful day. We thank you, Lord, for waking us up this morning, for allowing us to hear the birds sing their song of glory to you at the rising of the sun. We thank you, Lord, for us to be able to get dressed, get in our cars, and to come and be here in this place, at this house of worship today. For, Lord, we know that there are some that did not wake up today. And so, Lord, we pray for those that are grieving the loss of a loved one. We pray for those that are grieving the loss of a job, of a home, of a relationship. We pray, Lord, that you would comfort them during this difficult time. And, Lord, let them know that you are with them and that you are holding them tightly and closely within your loving embrace. Lord, we pray that you would be with those that are in the hospitals, those that are at home unable to get out of their beds, those that are recovering from a, an accident, you know, a sickness and illness, whatever it is that has got them down and knocked them out. Lord, we just pray that you would just touch them and minister to them right now. Oh God, touch their bodies, touch their minds and touch their spirits. Heal them completely and wholly, O oh God. And Lord, we pray that you would take away violence out of the hearts of people in the world. Lord, we pray that there would no longer be war in Sudan, Ukraine, in other areas of the world where there's conflict. We pray, Lord, that you would turn the plows into or the swords and the, the plowshares, Lord, that people would no longer need a weapon to shoot and to kill one another. Lord, we just pray that you would change the hearts of men and women, that we would seek to love one another, to look after one another, rather than to harm and hurt one another. And so now, Lord, I just ask the church to pray the prayer that you have taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Will the ushers prepare to come forward at this time as we continue to worship through the giving of God's tithe and our offering? And those of you who are watching online, if you would like to support the ministries here at Bradley United Methodist Church, there's a, a, a link on the, in the comments tab there that you can click on that will take you to the giving page of our website. And you too can contribute to the ministries here. And so if the ushers would come forward at this time. <clears throat>
source of all good things. You have blessed your children with many gifts, and each of us can serve and help build your kingdom here on earth. We know at times we have denied our giftedness and dismissed the impact of our gifts can have as we ask you to dedicate our tithes and offerings today. We remind ourselves that you seek not only that we open our wallets, but also open our hearts and our whole being to the work of making your love and compassion the norm, not the exception in this world. We pray this in Christ's name, amen. benediction today, right? They're so subdued. <laughs> All right, spread out. This is how we do our dismissal. We put our hands out. There you go. All right, repeat after me. Beloveds of Bradley. 
You are being sent to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with others through words and deeds. Amen. God with patience and passion. Be deliberate in enacting your faith. Be steadfast in celebrating the Spirit's power. And may peace be your way in the world. Amen. Amen.